Venus of Dreams by Pamela Sargent. So this is episode 44 of a series I'm doing called The Masterpieces of Science Fiction. And it's 140 books that I'm reading through, and this was the 44th book that I've read in this series. Now, you'll have to bear with me a little bit. I finished this book a couple weeks ago, but I had a personal kind of matter to attend to with some family and set me back a little bit, but it, it's just one of those things when life comes at you, you just got to reprioritize everything. So didn't really get to read that much this month, and I'll talk about it a little bit more in my monthly wrap-up, but just so you know, everything's fine now, and if you want more information, you can uh, just tune into that video when it comes out. So this book is a big one. This paperback clocks in at just over 500 pages, and I've never read anything from Pamela Sargent before. She's written a lot of, like, feminist-based science fiction. And this is also part of a trilogy called the Venus Collection. And it goes Venus of Dreams, Venus of Shadows, and Children of Venus. Or Child of Venus, I should say. So I'll talk about the sequels a little bit more, or whether or not I'm planning on reading them. But... This was a, a very interesting book. It really involves, it, it's kind of mostly about relationships and society and gender and some things like that. But the backdrop of this novel is set into the future where humanity has kind of started terraforming Venus. And first I'm gonna talk about just what's going on in the solar system, the setup of the book, and then we'll get into the plot a little bit and then just wrap it up. So this is quite a bit in the future. I don't remember exactly how far, hundreds of years, I believe. And Earth has kind of changed quite a bit from what we um, see it today. So global warming has continued on and sea levels have risen. It's it's harder and harder to farm for food and things like that. Most of the government of the world is run under these Islamic kind of rulers. And they had a couple different names. I The pronunciation of them, I wasn't 100% sure, but you could look it up. And there's also a couple other unique things going on with this society. So... There's this group called the Habers who have gone on out of the planet and started setting up some infrastructure, some places, some habitats for people to live, whether it's on other planets, moons, asteroids, or just kind of orbiting around some of these bo um, celestial bodies. So you have that group called the Habers who are sort of friendly with this Islamic um, rulership, but, you know, there's a little bit of issues between them. You also have these people who are called linkers, and they link themselves up with these kind of big computers, almost AI, and so they always have all this data available to them. They have this, like, telepathic link set up, and there's not tons of these people on earth or whatever but they're they're all over they they people see them every once in a while but they're not like a majority of the population and then there's some terraforming going on on venus there's some settlements set up on mars there's people kind of spread out around the solar system a bit and they're doing some interesting things on Venus. They've built these, they, they have some floating space stations. They have these islands that are raised up above, above the, the dense atmosphere of Venus. And then they're, they've also built this like solar shade to protect the planet from solar radiation. So there's some really interesting, you know, science and technology things going on with this terraforming. 
But when we go back to Earth, which most of this first book takes place on Earth, um, another thing that's happened is a lot of women have taken on the farming roles. So a lot of this story takes place in kind of the Midwest of the United States, where there's these families of women, basically, who run farms, and a lot of it's done with, like, remote control, robotics, tending to the fields, and people in a room um, with, like, these, um, I forget what they call them, but these, like, bands that kind of help them communicate with these robots or whatever else. And the, the women, they, they, they can... They, they have men that come through, but there's no real marriages or anything like that. And all sexuality is, is very, very open. So if there's a man coming through, he may have sex with this woman and then the next day this other woman. And there doesn't seem to be any um, jealousy or anything like that. If a woman chooses to have a child with one of these men, they can choose the sex. If one man ha has more than one baby with a female, then that's almost in like a bonding territory, which isn't really common. It's, it's accepted sometimes, but most of these women live by themselves in, well, in groups of women. And the men just kind of come and go. And if one of these women have a girl as a baby, then they kind of become another member of this like farming community. If they have a male, then they raise them until they're old enough. And then most of the males end up kind of going around the country, fixing things and doing odd jobs, maybe going off world if they get a chance to do things. But most of the women that run this agricultural industry kind of stick to it. They, they kind of, once you're, you're there, this is where you're at. Occasionally, they might get an opportunity to go do something else, but generally, this is what you're born into, and this is what you're kind of dealt with. So, our main character, Iris, she is kind of a child when we first start out the book in one of these farming communities, but she's a little special. She she has a desire to learn and read and write, which most people in this civilization don't. They don't read and they don't really care to know too much else besides their day-to-day going-ons. So she starts learning all these things, and she gets access to some data and knowledge and learns to read. And as one of these linkers is coming through their town, she kind of gets, our main character Iris kind of gets noticed as being different and having a you know, a thirst for knowledge and all of this kind of stuff. So this linker kind of ends up helping her out with getting her more schooling and giving her an opportunity to maybe leave this farming community and, and go towards what her passion is, which is she wants to really take part in this terraforming of Venus. So a lot of the book in the beginning is this civilization, this agricultural um, female-dominated um, society, all the inner workings of, of that, the, some men that come through. Um, around, once we kind of get deep into that, we also get another plot line going of a man named Chen who is working on the terraforming effort of Venus. And he's been kind of doing his thing there on the islands, on the space stations. But he, do, he does something that kind of like gets him kicked out of the project. So he ends up coming back to Earth, bumping into our main character. They kind of end up falling in love, which, like I said, is not real common. They If they choose to bond, then that's kind of not really looked upon too fondly. So there's a dyna dynamic going on there, but there's... There's like also this open free love that's kind of taking place in the middle of this and you start to see a little jealousy and some things going on like that. But like I said, a lot of this book is about relationships and society and um, you know genders and 
and you spend a lot of time in the, the beginning of the book with, with a lot of those issues. Now, as we get toward, you know, like the second half of the book, the pacing picks up a little bit. We get to leave Earth. We get to see our main character, Iris, and her new found love, Chen, kind of get to go back to um, Venus and perform some work. But there's a lot of other complications that are going on at the same time with some political things. Um, and so that's what kind of ends up uh, being the finale of the book is a lot of these issues that are taking place kind of off world in around v Venus. So overall, it was a, it was a very intriguing book. Um, I guess I'll just go into the pros and cons. Um, Pamela Sargent's writing is really good. I never, even though it was a long book and the pacing was slow, I always wanted to pick it up and see what was going on. She kept kind of baiting you with enough information um, to where I never felt like I was slogging through sections of this book. I, I did read this kind of slow. I was going to take my time with it. Um, but it was, it was paced well, although it was paced slow. Um, you know, the some other pros is just some of these ideas. I know a lot of people might not be into um, some of these gender issues that she kind of makes up in these books. They don't always seem completely plausible, but it gets you to think. It kind of breaks out of the normal science fiction, um, you know, themes that we're, that I'm normally used to. And I thought she did a really good job with it. it. Never got preachy. I don't even know if she had a complete point she was trying to give. Maybe I got to read the rest of the books to find out. But I thought she just did a really good, good job putting the story together. The science around the terraforming effort was interesting, but she never really goes into that much detail about what's going on. Now, a while ago, I read Kim Stanley Robinson's Mars Trilogy, and that is densely scientific in so many ways. This book is nowhere near as scientific as that, which could be a pro for a lot of people. This, this book really is about relationships and society and things like that. Um, the science is interesting, but there's just not a lot of time spent on what is actually going on, why they're doing it. It's just kind of presented to you. So, you know, some cons would, would definitely be this is just a slower book. It's a longer book. Like I said, I didn't really feel bogged down by it, but it's, it's just paced a little bit slower. The pacing speeds up towards the end um, with the big finale of the book, but... You know, it's it's going to be one that is probably going to take you a while to read. It took me at least a couple weeks to read this one. And now let's go into if I want to read the two sequels, which I have here. Now, I was definitely intrigued by this book, and I and I definitely want to read the sequels. But I think the the plot is easy enough to remember. There wasn't too many things going on that I think I could probably wait months and pick up the next book. So I think this is really just one of those mood books when you're ready to read something and get into a character driven story. Um, you know, take your time with it. And, and once I get back to that point, I'm going to pick up at least the second book, continue through with this. I think this second book is the longest book of the three. It's over 600 pages. So there's that too. But it was definitely intriguing enough where I want to continue with it. So look forward for those maybe in the, in the future months from now. Um, I'll keep kind of picking away at that trilogy. Um, but that's it for that one. Next up, I'm reading She by H. Ryder Haggard. I'm almost done with this at this point, so I'll probably in another day or two do a review of that and kind of catch up um, after this little slowdown I had. So... Once again, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.